Welcome back to High Tech Custom Concepts. This is Carl. How you guys doing? Today we're going to talk about hand safety on the KSG and how to avoid any problems because we've all heard the stories in the internet of the guy who lost a few fingers because his hand went in front of the muzzle, something happened, it broke. We're going to discuss that, discuss how it happened and how you can take safety uh, options this way that can never ever happen to anybody ever. So. On our table over here, I have two examples of our KSGs, and they're going to be outfitted with different options for you guys to prevent any kind of a safety mishaps. So this way we all keep our fingers. All right. So first of all, let me discuss how this probably happened. This is the stock KSG. It has a plastic rail on the bottom. My theory is that the person bought a cheap kind of a... Uh, injection molded handle pistol grip that was only a one uh, slot holding design and it was plastic now the thing he probably did was he wanted to see how many can I possibly shoot in a row and you know bang 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 as fast as you can like carelessly now gun is, guns are all about safety you want to be uh, well trained practiced at the range or, or if you have a country um, yard you know in a safe area with a backstop that's safe in controlled fashion you know a couple shells at a time until you get very comfortable with the gun something obviously went wrong with this person my theory is that the plastic handle broke and he was charging as fast as he can his hand broke the, the handle kind of went in front and as it went in front he probably just pulled the trigger because things happen quickly and he probably didn't realize what happened and he pulled the trigger and boom and his fingers that's what happens so now the thing is that a lot of these um, vertical grips that you see on the market these plastic ones and things like that they were technically designed for AR-15s you take the grip and you shoulder the weapon and you just pop 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 that's it it's just to shoulder the weapon and hold it steady this way you can aim. It was not designed for a 12 gauge pump shotgun to be like, you know, leverage. That's a lot, a lot of leverage when you're, you know, charging a shotgun. And the, we know the KSG cannot be short stroked. If you don't charge it all the way back and forward, you're going to get a misfeed. And that's what happens to a lot of people. So you have to train that you just back all the way forward, nice and solid and hard. And you won't have a problem with the KSGs. Maybe in the first six months of their design they had a little hiccups here and there but they've perfected the design I haven't seen any problems with ours and I've been buying the last couple models because we make everything for these guns we want to make sure that they operate and function 100% because that's what we guarantee 100% functioning 100% install installation easy do-it-yourself kind of stuff so now that's probably how the situation happened now how can we avoid this well we've designed a couple of options here one option is we've designed this aluminum rail. Now it's not just any aluminum rail. This is a billet 6061 machine aluminum. We dovetail inside the, the to make it as low profile as possible. And what we do in this design is we use eight set screws. And what the eight set screws do is we give uh, we also provide aluminum locking spacer rails. I don't know if you can see this good. I'm kind of like in front of the camera here by myself, so this is a homemade movie here. The locking spacers go into the groove. So we have four. One, two, three, four. These spacers allow the set screws from the from this rail to go into the into the holes. It's not a through hole, it's a blind hole, and it locks this luminous spacer. There's no play in this. So the luminous spacer is locked into place with the rail from these eight set screws. So you have eight points that it's pushing into four different uh Aluminum bars, these are called like braking, brake spacer bars yeah, because it holds it into spot, into spot. So now the rail is being held with four bars across the whole thing, locked in place, no play at all. Once that's locked in place, you take our vertical pistol grip. This design, as you can see, slotted down the middle. I'm not sure if you can see that. The slot. Using two screws, not one. So we have two screws. So. I'm not going to take it apart in front of here. I'm going to maybe cut the video and then I'll put it on afterwards. But this slides into place and then you have the two set screws that lock into the aluminum rail. So you have an aluminum pistol grip onto an aluminum rail with two screws here and four locking bars across the whole thing. That is rock solid. 
and we give you an extra extension piece. It comes like in two pieces, uh, three actually. This is a removable end cap. There's a hollow center section that you can attach. So if you have a bigger hand, you know this will extend out another uh, two, three inches or two and a half inches. So you have a good real estate if you have a bigger hand uh, hand grip. So that's one option. Um, vertical grip. So it's okay if you train with it, if you train with AR-15s, you're used to it, you like that kind of position, that's fine. To me, it's a little bit awkward, you know, charging a shotgun with your, with your arm kind of like at, an, at a weird angle, you know, and then you, like this is more natural for a shotgun. You palm it up this way and you go back and forth. Now that, and that's where we came up with the second idea of a charging handle. And this is our other high-tech uh, KSG with the howitzer muzzle brake. And this is the striker charging handle. Now the striker charging handle, we installed it on an extended aluminum rail. Uh, you don't need any aluminum rail if you're using this charging handle. And the reason is, is that it has a slot down the middle too. If you look on our website, there's a slot right in the back. It goes all the way down the center spine of, this, of the top of this handle. And we have two screws here that go through the, the, the rails, the Picatinny rails. And when you, when you lock these screws into place, it clamps down the whole entire handle, the aluminum, and it acts like a, a like a like a clamp. It clamps on the whole rail. So now you have the force of your charging being distributed across the whole whole handle, not just on one pin or something like that or two pins. And I always prefer safety number one. Try to eliminate any problems that might go wrong, especially when you're dealing with, with uh, firearms. You don't want any problems. Period. That's the end of the story. Because there's no second chances. You lose a finger, you lose a hand. It's over. That's it, you can't get that back. This stuff is, is minor compared to what your you know, safety is. So we designed this uh, handle to palm it and grab through the holes, and then you have solid grip, cannot let go. Now, if you're in a, in a close quarter combat, say you're indoors, somebody tries to grab the gun from you, you have this grip over here. If you were just holding it, it might slip out of your hand. This, you can't slip out of your hand. Try, try to, you know, so you have a good grip on something, it ain't gonna happen. All right, it's like a battering ram almost. And then we put the Crimson Trace laser right in the front of this at your fingertips. So you just put the button, boom, laser on, laser off. Laser on, laser off. That's it, and it's ambidextrous. This is a Crimson Trace CMR201. This is actually sticking out a little too much. My guy installed it wrong. This goes all the way back down to here. So it's a, it's a compact design. Oh, okay, he didn't tighten it on loose. So it goes on a little further, see that? It's right over there at the end. So you have the, the laser right at your fingertips, right under there. So that I, I like everything at my hands. Then we have options for flashlight to put up on the top or whatever you need for safety if you're going to use this for indoors. How it's a muzzle brake, we just came out with this February, uh, end of February 2017. I am not 250 pound guy, Marine, you know, like I trained. You know, I'm a regular average guy. This thing kicks like a mule, all right? It's a fact. It's a bullpup design. It's not like a long barrel gun where it kind of jumps up a little bit and, and it dissipates some of that recoil. No. This is a short shotgun. That, that recoil is coming right back at you. And, you know, I've had guys emailing me, oh my god, I have bruises on my shoulder after I shot a couple boxes, you know, went through like 50 shells. No. That's why we designed the howitzer because it worked for the military on the World War II uh, cannons, howitzer cannons. They must have had some idea how to fix that problem. And we designed it took the exact angles, dimensions, and sure enough, that reduction in recoil is over 50%. Amazing. So, makes the gun totally enjoyable. And I've had that same guy who told me about the bruising in his shoulder email me back and say, my shoulders are awesome now. No more bruises, and I love this KSG. I can shoot through now like 400 shells now, no problems. So, that's one option. But that was just because I'm explaining because it's right in the front of the gun, and in case you want to uh, see how it works. Now, this shotgun also has the shell carrier, and I was reading, and I was actually talking to a customer who's a law enforcement officer. Says biggest deterrent on a shotgun when people are, you're trying to make them comply is they see shells on the outside of this shotgun, it puts fear into them. I don't know. It's just some, he said something about that. Seeing the shells in a shotgun just strikes fear in them that they know that well, that is huge and that means business and and you're dead. You know, if this thing is going to be fired in your direction, there's no second chance. So, you know, it's not like a, a bullet where I can maybe dodge the bullet. Shotgun has a nice little spread, and it's not going anywhere. So between the howitzer and the shell carrier and this charging handle, we're talking a deterrent visual force. All right? 
And that's half of the battle. You don't want confrontation. You don't want to really have to use this. You want people to comply. If it's a bad guy in your house, you want him to get on the ground, police are coming. Or if it's a really bad situation and all hell's breaking loose, well then you want to take care of business. And this is all about safety and taking care of business in the safest way and the most comfortable way possible. So this is our striking charging handle, striker. Now, again, palm, fingers through, you could charge it very strong. The other people ask, oh, can I put my hand through the hole and you know charge it like that, holding, you know, I didn't design it that way. You can if you want. I mean, you know, you just have to kind of hold it over here. It's up to you. More personally, this is the best way because you could take your hand away if you need to really quickly. And I like having my knuckles free, not like locked in underneath something. So that's personally. If you have gloves, you have plenty of space, no problems at all. So that's the one option. Don't need the extended rail, only if you want to use a laser or a flashlight or you have maybe a, la a light set up from an a pistol you have or something you want to use it here, you can use it there. It's perfectly fine. Now, this is the shotgun without anything. It's the plastic. You know, personally, I don't like, it's too close to the muzzle. Your hand can slip, you're sweating. No way, Jose. This is, uh, you know, going to either add the rail with the vertical grip if you like it, or you're going to do the striker charging handle. Now, I hope I helped explain a little bit of our options. If you have any questions at all, please put them uh, on the bottom below. Uh, instant message me. I'm here all the time, every day, five days a week at the shop. We make everything right over here in Mount Vernon, New York, USA, supporting jobs. All these parts and accessories upgrades are available on our website. If you have any ideas or suggestions, also, please put it below. I read the comments and then I'll do a future video. If you want to see something different, you want a tour of the shop, let me know. I'm here for you guys, okay? So, um, again, you can visit our website or go to Facebook. We have a Facebook page, High Tech Custom Concepts. Uh, what is it? S slash Facebook. I'm going to put the link below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, be safe, and enjoy your KSG.